Streptococcus pyogenes is one of the most common pathogens found on the planet. It is estimated that 5 to 15% of people actually harbor it in the respiratory tract, even if they are not experiencing any symptoms. Streptococcus pyogenes is a gram-positive species with a cocci shape. It contains a hyaluronic acid capsule that allows it to resist phagocytosis and has LTA and M proteins around the membrane that allow it to adhere efficiently to host cells. Phylogeny of the bacteria includes being a member of the subkingdom Posibacteria, which includes gram-positive bacteria. The phylum Formicutes, which is the most abundant bacterial phylum in humans, class Bacilli, which are all cylindrical bacterium, order Lactobacillales, which comprises bacteria whose primary end product of carbohydrate metabolism is lactic acid, family Streptococcaceae, which consists of gram-positive cocci, genus Streptococcus, which means twisted berries, to describe the chain-like grouping of the bacteria, and species Pyogenes, which is a facultatively aerobic bacteria, so can proliferate in many different environments. Streptococcus pyogenes was first observed by Hippocrates, the father of medicine, although he didn't know it at the time when it became coined the flesh-eating bacteria. He simply described it as a severe soft tissue infection. In the 1860s, during the Civil War, about 3,000 soldiers were thought to have the same type of infection, and 46% of the infected individuals actually died from it. In 1874, it was depicted to be a bacterial infection by a man named Theodore Billroth. About a decade later, it was isolated by Frederick Felleisen in 1883. In the early 1900s, it was given the name Streptococcus pyogenes by a man named Frederick Julius Rosenbach. Then finally, in the 1930s, it was studied for hemolytic activity by a woman named Rebecca Lansfield, who tested the bacteria on blood. It was then that she determined that the pathogen was practicing beta-hemolysis. In some studies, scientists refer to Streptococcus pyogenes as normal flora, where other scientists may beg to differ. What is known is that the only host known to naturally house this bacteria is the human, although it lacks importance in the environment of the body and is not known to add much benefit to our systems, although we are adding much benefit to theirs. This bacteria is known to proliferate in human saliva and epithelial cells. Skin-to-skin -skin contact or transmission of respiratory droplets between individuals is absolutely critical for maintenance of the species. It can enter and exit the body easily through these seemingly always open pathways and even loves to feed on the molecules we provide from our common molecular pathways. Growth of the bacteria tends to increase when nitrogen and oxygen are plentiful. If glucose or other sugars are present, but nitrogen or oxygen are not, they tend to die out. They do although require carbohydrates to get through the electron transport chain for the product lactic acid. The bacteria was actually originally observed growing in casein hydrolysate basal medium, which consists of the pancreatic fluid casein. Whether the pathogen is spread between people or somehow gets into the bloodstream from our respiratory tracts, the area of infection always depends on the bacteria's destination. If the bacteria reach the brain, the host may develop bacterial meningitis or inflammation of the meninges. If it travels into the skin, impetigo, erysipelas, or scarlet fever can occur, which are all different infections of the skin and sometimes nodes. Finally, if the pathogen reaches the fascia around the muscles, the host may experience necrotizing fasciitis, which is the flesh-eating disease with a title meaning decaying infection of the fascia. Once the pathogen reaches its destination, it is time to set up camp. Yeah, but not like that. More like this. Anyways. Once the pathogen reaches its destination, it can adhere to host cells using the LTA, or lipotechoic acid, on its capsule. It can then enter the host with the help of the M1 protein on its capsule. 
The M1 protein helps promote its entrance through the tissues and into the cell and is considered its primary invasin. The state of the bacteria up until this point is considered an elementary body or EB for short. The EB pathogen undergoes fusion into the host cell and it can then be differentiated into a reticulate body or RB for short. Streptococcus pyogenes has a protease involved in this mechanism that can clone the pathogen's gene and make it resistant to neutrophils. It blocks the site of interleukin activation so that no signal can be sent for neutrophils to clear infection, making the bacteria even that much more viable. Once it undergoes this differentiation, it is considered an RB. The pathogen then duplicates within the cell and is encompassed by a vacuole. The pathogen then has two options. It can either lyse the cell so all the new pathogens are released as EBs for further invasion, or it can make the cell cryptic. In this cryptic form, the RBs grow and basically take over the host cell's activity to break down the epithelial lining of the cell's environment. A very interesting protein named Endo-S can help the cryptic cell to do this. Endo-S is a 108 kilodalton sized protein secreted by the cell to hydrolyze the core of immunoglobulin G, or IgG for short. IgG is the most common immunoglobulin antibody and is vital for immune system support. Endo-S can secrete endoglycosidase to break the IgG's core down. Another important protein is SPB, which can cleave IgG in the hinge region. These mechanisms of endoglycosidase production to select for IgG are novel and have only been seen to occur by streptococcus pyogenes. The bacteria also uses oligosaccharide enzymes to break down the cell membrane of host cells when ready for invasion or lysis. In this way, the bacteria can actually form large invaginations in the cell and make it easy to invade. It is so important for people to know about this bacteria and how common it is so that they can be prepared and keep themselves from coming into contact with it. Some things people can do to prevent infection are washing their hands, using hand sanitizer often, taking prescribed medications when told to, as well as staying away from others during this time. People should not share towels, eating utensils, drinks, or eucalyptus Burt's Bees lip balm. Laundry should be washed in hot soapy water. Mouths and noses should be covered when sneezing and coughing or when others are doing so. Wounds and scratches should be covered and help should be seeked immediately when symptoms occur to avoid sickness and death.